Accountability has been slow for the Louisiana State Troopers involved in the death of Ronald Green. He was killed two years ago after a traffic stop in Chase near Monroe. Yeah, and for the highest ranking supervisor at that deadly scene, accountability has been non-existent because he's still on duty. Investigative reporter Mike Perlstein discovered there are other allegations from an earlier confrontation involving that veteran trooper. This body cam video from State Police Lieutenant John Clary of Troop F in Northeast Louisiana shows Ronald Green being dragged from his car. Tased. Beaten while in handcuffs, dragged by his feet, then left face down in the dirt as his life slipped away. But for two years, Clary denied having body camera video until leaked video, including from Clary's body cam, was published last month by the Associated Press. There was no investigation, no write-up of that. Come to find out two years later, uh, they discovered that his body cam was on. The video, now critical evidence in federal and local investigations, exposed that Clary's initial statements to detectives that Green died from injuries suffered in the accident was false. They reviewed the body cam and discovered that what he had written in his reports were not accurate or truthful. Clary was not only the ranking officer at that scene, he had by far the most experience with 31 years on the force. One of the troopers under his command during Green's arrest was fired last week, while another died in a car crash in 2020 after learning that he was being fired. No action has been announced against Clary. We requested Clary's employment records from the state police on June 1st, but that request has not yet been granted. But our investigation uncovered claims of excessive force against Clary and other troopers that have largely flown under the radar. Despite all these cameras on them, they apparently had no problem, um, you know, committing these, these uh, unconstitutional acts right on camera in front of everybody. The claims against Clary and other troopers are contained in several federal civil rights lawsuits from a 2016 protest march in Baton Rouge in the aftermath of the death of Alton Sterling at the hands of Baton Rouge police officers. As you can see from video provided in one of the lawsuits, the march began peacefully. Plaintiffs included video and photos from media, participants, and onlookers to support their lawsuit. They had, um, you know, riot gear, they had uh, Bearcat vehicles, um, all this sort of stuff in response to just a peaceful protest. This lawsuit filed by New Orleans attorneys Dave Lancer and William Most claims that officers from several different departments used military style tactics to surround the protesters, eventually cornering them in the yard of a woman's home. And then they got onto private property, invited onto private property, and thought that would be good enough. It, it really raises the question, what could the protesters have done differently? Nearly 200 protesters were arrested, with about a dozen claiming injuries at the hands of officers. Most of those officers were either Baton Rouge police or sheriff's deputies. But a close look at the video and photographic evidence shows that state police troopers also participated, and they were front and center when officers moved in to make arrests. And you can see Louisiana state police officers right in the middle of of these arrests happening right in the middle of uh, the officers swarming the private property to arrest people. According to Lancer's lawsuit, one of the commanding officers that day was then Sergeant John Clary, among 11 troopers listed by name as defendants. While Clary is also named in a defendant and at least two other lawsuits from the protest, this suit refers to him as, quote, a platoon leader. So what we do know about his involvement is that he was, you know, part of this mobile field force unit one of the individuals coordinating this response and coordinating sort of the tactics used against uh, the protesters. State police declined to comment on the lawsuit or Clary's role that day. The defendant's initial responses to the suits include a claim that the officer's actions that day were, quote, reasonable, justified, and legally permissible. But plaintiffs claim that, quote, in their frenzy, the officers arrested a mix of protesters, reporters, and legal observers. The arrests were extremely violent. In one of the most highly publicized images from the arrest was this one that appeared on the front page of the Times-Picayune newspaper. Plaintiff Ray Pollard was holding a sign that said, Love, 
before state troopers grabbed her by her neck and arms as they arrested her using zip tie handcuffs. While neither of the troopers shown making this arrest are Clary, the attorneys are working to determine what role he played. And the Louisiana State Police troopers targeted her for whatever reason um, and actually choked her while arresting her. All charges against the protesters for obstructing public passages were dropped. Some settlements have been paid out to protesters by the Baton Rouge Metro Council on behalf of local police agencies, but records show nothing paid by the state police. With Lieutenant Clary and state police under scrutiny in the Green case, Rafael Goyaneci of the Metropolitan Crime Commission believes their roles in Baton Rouge should be revisited by the feds. You know, that may mean that they're taking a look at some of the same footage that you're looking at. Attorneys are pushing for more specific information about Clary's and other troopers' roles in the Baton Rouge arrest. But right now, they say they are fighting to overcome the officer's qualified immunity. Mike Perlstein, Eyewitness News. The largest current state police deployment beyond its normal duties is right here in New Orleans, where 22 troopers are helping the understaffed NOPD deal with a spike in violent crime through the end of the summer. The assignment is being called Operation Golden Eagle.